Happy Friday, everybody. It is, I have no idea what I'm saying. It's Reality Water Cooler. And I am Sarah from Texas. And this is our place to chat all the latest reality TV gossip and Jeff Lewis, the Jeff Lewis after show. Oh my goodness. We have so much to chat about today. I thought it was a really good show. And until they were talking about it on the after show, Poland Patrick, I didn't even think, I think Sam said it, one of the producers, this is the last show of 2023. So shout out to everyone who's been listening since day one. I really was a Jeff, I mean, a, a Howard Stern fan on Sirius XM. So it took me forever to even switch off of that and find Radio Andy. And once I found Jeff Lewis, it was on. But if y'all know my story, you'll know I never knew the app. I never knew the app. So it took me a long while to figure out that I didn't just have to be in my car to listen to it. So when I quit being a teacher after five years, decided to stay home again full time, uh, August 2021, I finally figured out the app and then I could happily lay in my bed because at the heart of it all, I am a Doug, a Doug Buden girl and I love laying in my bed and listening to the show. And then I went to my first live show, November 2021. Then I got invited in June to the season one Hollywood house lift party, decided on a whim to go live and June 2022. Never since have I missed going live with y'all five or six freaking days a week to chat reality TV, Jeff Lewis, all the things. So shout out for all the OG chumpettes who have been with me for so long. Um, I've met so many of y'all in person now. I talked to some of y'all on the phone. I know y'all from DMs. It is the best to have our Chumpette community. I am so beyond lucky. I can't even tell you what an amazing year 2023 has been. And if you know me personally, you'll know I've always been someone that's lived life to the fullest. I've always had gobs and gobs of crazy energy. So I am a yes girl at the heart. So if you think of a fun idea or you have something that you think I would like to do, shoot me a message. I'm probably up for it. And trust me, it is still not forgotten that I had the idea to do kind of a chump at long weekend at one of the uh, girls trips from Ultimate Girls Trip or one of the Housewives show. And I was on, I think I'm on episode four finally of Legacy Roni Ultimate Girls Trip. I thought it was further along and I was more behind than I thought. Um, but I think it would be amazing. I've never been to St. Bart's. I would love to meet Martine and the sous chef and all. I mean, oh my God, it would be amazing. So let's manifest that. I have definitely got some ideas for that. And if we split it up and max it out, y'all, it doesn't really come out to all that much, excuse me, much money. I mean, don't get me wrong. It's not cheap, but oh, that's a good idea. Laura says the Trixie Motel would be a blast too. You're not wrong. Anyways, okay, so much to chat about. Let's get into it. Do all the things. Make sure you're following, subscribing, liking, commenting, blah, 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 blah. Nisa says, I'm going to St. Bart's. Woo -woo. It would be so fun. Oh, you're going in February. You're so lucky. Okay, I did put a post out. I did finally figure out who this Gypsy Rose Blanchard is. Blanchard. Um, sadly, there's so many stories of mostly moms. I don't know why. Uh, with this Munchausen's disease or whatever it's called, where they purposefully for attention or control or power, or whatever, ugh, um, keep their kids sick when they're not really sick. So that is the girl that just got released. Um, I guess cameras are on her. She just made a video of her first selfie out of jail. So it sounds like y'all were reminded me on DM. And I sort of remember seeing some story about this, maybe a maybe a Lifetime movie or something. Uh, maybe it was the HBO documentary that I watched. I don't remember. Um, but she went through a lot of stuff and then she had a boyfriend and I think she got the boyfriend to the mom, right? So is he in jail? Did he even go to jail? I think he was like intellectually delayed or something. So I'm not, yes, Munchausen by proxy is the name of the actual disease. Um, but I don't even know if he ever went to jail for it. I mean, or if he got off somehow. Anyways, crazy. Okay, I did just talk about it, Ultimate Girls Trip. Y'all know I adore Kristen Takeman. I have met her now 
gosh, three or four or five times, hung out with her. She is amazing. She's even more beautiful inside than out. I had never heard this story about her husband, Josh. And I think Sonia called it Dolly Madison, but it's Ashley Madison. And I mostly know of that name, that's app, because that is where Josh Duggar, remember the Duggar people in Arkansas? He got in trouble for worse, right? He was doing some kid, kid stuff. But I think he was on Ashley Madison too, which is some app for married people. I guess that they want to keep the, you know, keep it on the down low that they're trying to cheat. But anyways, it sounds like they've worked through it. Um, she did go into it a little bit more details, but I do agree with her. She doesn't, she's not besties with these people. She doesn't owe it to them to tell her everything that went on in her marriage, especially I think she said it was eight or 10 years ago. And it's not like Kelly Ben Simone is coming at her like she's like on her side or trying to be a girl's girl, right? Like she's really come at her calling a super fan, uh, calling her all sorts of names and just trying to, I agree what they later say. I think I'm on episode three or four when they said that um, she's remember, remember the story with her and Bethany, like I'm up here and you're down here. That to me is exactly how she's still trying to act. Like, you know, I did everything myself. I do not know how divorce works. I don't know how co-parenting works in New York, if it's different, whatever. I don't believe for one damn second that she got zero money from her husband. At the very least, you would get child support, right? So if anyone knows any details, if anyone wants to dig on Kelly Ben Simone, if it's public knowledge anyways, uh, I'm just curious if she truly means I got no help. I raised them absolutely on me, my own. Does that mean they never saw their dad? They never got any money. They didn't, he didn't help with college. He didn't help with private school. He didn't buy clothes. He didn't have medical insurance for them. I mean, I don't know. I just, I know I get a little bit, I get a little riled up because I don't like when women or men try to act like they do more than they do. If she, if those are things are all true, then great. But I just feel like she's, I don't know that it's true that she absolutely got no dollars from her ex-husband in the divorce. You know what I mean? Yeah. Lady Grace said single motherhood is a struggle, but it's not to be worn as a badge of honor. And I just, I don't understand when people have full custody or whatever, split custody. I don't know why we can't call it co-parenting. Like when truly two parents are equal or almost equal. I mean, is anyone ever equal? Give me a break. As a stay-at-home mom and wife, I always do more in the household than my husband does. But also his ass goes to work Monday through Friday for our family. So it's not a competition, but I do think there's often, you know, 60% in a relationship and 40%, not exactly 50-50. And that can always shift throughout the marriage too, right? And with kids. Um, I just don't understand when people are really 50-50, why they call it, I'm a single mom. Like if your child is really going to the other parent's house 50% of the time, I mean, to me, that's co-parenting. But anyways, I'm gonna get a lot of shit about that, whatever. Because I'm talking out my ass. I don't know what it is, but I think a true single mother or a true single father is somebody that is either passed away, they're a widow, they never married the person, they have zero relationship, they get zero money from them. Do I think there's instances where people get uh, child support and yet there's no physical relationship or whatever with the kids? Absolutely. Where they are a single mom in the essence that they have the kids 24 seven, but they get child support to help them a little bit financially. So anyways, okay, we are definitely going to get into that. I definitely know what you're saying, Michelle on Instagram says, I don't think Jeff's kidnapping skits are funny at all. I'm definitely getting some of those comments and DMs. Uh, I personally think, and we'll chat about this because I know it's going to be a, a, a hot topic. Um, I think Jeff, this is how he deals with things like that, right? KDF says, you're spot on. I agree with you. Thank you. And yes, you're right, Laura. Every situation is different. And that's why I just don't know what Kelly Ben Simone's exact facts are with her divorce. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, I'm a Dolly girl says, I'm a single mom. My kids are 28 and 22 and I'm single. Yes. But you know what I mean? They're, they're taught when they're young and like, taking care of them. Anyways. Okay. Um, what else? Dorinda and her boob tape. I mean, I had no idea. 
Dorinda, I think is like 58. She's not the one, if anything, well, I guess she got her boobs done. I would expect Sonia to be more of a boob tape master than Dorinda. But who is it? It's Dorinda coming to bat and helping out Sonia make her boobs look like she's had a $20,000 boob job. I'm here for it. I have never used boob tape yet. I have put boob tape on someone as they were telling me everything to do. Uh, I'm not opposed to it though, especially some of these dresses and shirts where you need them to not be this way, as Sonia said, underneath my armpits, but you need them to be high and tight. And I'm not opposed to it at all. So I need to be watching me some YouTube videos on the boob cheek usage. Okay, I did tell y'all I would answer any of your SiriusXM app questions. So please let me know. Yes, that's very different, Darla. Uh, that's what I'm talking about. Darla says, my son's dad passed away when my son was three. So I do wear raising my son as a badge of honor. That shit was hard. And again, that's a completely different situation. I'm sorry you dealt with that, Darla. But that's what I mean by you really were a single mom. Like there was no other parent there to help you. Um, anyways. Okay. The Series XM app. Yes, it has its issues. Basically, if you had the shows or 789 or Jeff Lewis Live video, as the favorites, then that now translates over to your library on the SiriusXM app. So the bottom right corner says library. I agree that it's not perfect. It's not ideal. I don't love all of it. Pat says, can you restart the shows with going back an hour? Yes. I've made pictures where I've circled the arrow on my Jeff Lewis Obsessed Facebook group. I've also made Instagram stories the last... Um, five or six days since my app updated. I think there's one up there now. So if you're looking at the app, everything's going to be backwards probably because I'm on camera. If you're looking at the app and you see Jeff Lewis live, like you're watching the show and you've, you're 13 minutes in, do not hit the button that says one hour. That actually goes back exactly one hour. And then you'll be stuck listening to Smith sisters or something else that you're not trying to listen to. There's an arrow to the left of the play button, to the left as you're looking at the app, doesn't say restart. It used to say restart. Why can't it just say restart? I don't understand. Restart is so freaking clear. Sirius XM, just change it to say restart. That arrow button to the left of the play button on the Sirius XM app is the button that will put it at exactly the beginning of whatever show you're trying to listen to. Okay, how to find the Sirius uh, XM Jeff Lewis videos. Again, it's a little bit tricky. Um, it is a blue background. So everything else tends to be a red background. It's not called Jeff Lewis video now. It's called Jeff Lewis Live. And then the description says like uncut uh, video from the show or something like that. On the, I'm finding that by either hitting the search button, Jeff Lewis Live, and then you scroll down and just look for the blue one. Okay. The blue background, that one, and then it will have all the dates. So last night I was able to watch Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. I watched the previews, the pre-show. I watched the commercial breaks and I watched the after show. Again, so worth it, y'all. You never know when they're going to have a laughing moment, when Jeff is going to give some insider information. Uh, I think it's always worth watching. And Honestly, if I didn't catch it live, I would watch it on my smart TV. So don't forget, you can put SiriusXM app on your smart TV. You just have to log into your SiriusXM. And then also on there, you can, well, the app's a little bit different. You can favorite or find it there. So I always think it's better to watch the whole video if you haven't listened to it live during the day. But obviously, I go live with y'all at 12 p.m. Pacific, 3 p.m. Eastern. I'm always going to have it listen to it. I have an iPhone, so that's how it looks like on mine. Yeah. Christine Anderson says she put all the 789 shows in my library, but they've canceled all the shows. There's no more happy hour. There's no more, um, well, I guess the after show. So mine still is coming up as a push notification, which is good. And I think that's because I always had that push notification as a favorite on the previous app. So if it does that, then it will still come up with that. And then you can just push play. But the main part is don't push that one hour button, hit the arrow button right to the left of the play button on Jeff Lewis. And that's what will go to the beginning. 
Yes, Bri Bri Cherie, Bri Bri Cherie. The Chump Happy Hour was so fun to listen to. I miss it. Yeah. But honestly, it was so much content. Like when they had the um, Flipping Out Fridays and that recap, it was just, now that Hollywood House of Season 2 has started, it's just a lot. So, I mean, I never really made time for Dr. Donna's show. Um, uh, I just didn't have the time for it, but that has already gone away too. So Victoria says, who do you think the snake is that Jeff is expelling from his life? Someone we don't know. I don't know, but someone, a few of y'all have said maybe, maybe Gage is having another baby with the same surrogate they used. So that would make sense because eight years, a female, it's someone that's not on radio television. It's somebody he said is aligning with someone else. So that would be Gage and the surrogate aligning together to do something. Um, maybe they're suing him over the Monroe, you know, birth. I don't really know. Uh, but that would make sense to me. The time, the female, not related to radio or TV and aligning with someone else that's out to hurt them is what it sounds like to me. He's saying fraud. Yeah. And that could be something related to the contract or something. I don't know. Again, it could be something like that. I don't know. Don't know. But that's the only one that makes sense to me so far. So if you have other ideas, let me know. Doesn't the surrogate hate Jeff and Gage? I don't think she hates Gage. I think she hated Jeff. <laughs> yeah, she definitely hates him for sure. Um, yes. Okay, let's keep going. Um, Doug. Oh, my God. So I love Doug so much. He is in New York right now posting videos with his mom, the widow. I love her so much. She is life goals to me. But he posted this, like, more info coming soon. Sounds like Trace Amigos is dead in the water and it's dos amigos, but they're not uh, amigas, but they're not saying that he is just teasing a Texas show or a Texas tour of Shannon Bedore and Vicki Gumbelson. And it says more info to come soon. So clearly I live in the Houston area. So I would love wherever they're at. Hopefully it's in Houston. I won't have to travel because the Lord knows I have put in the dollars. I have put in the time on traveling this year. I am ready to, to, to end uh, well, I'm, I'm ready to travel to LA in January 20th. Uh, by the way, I'm still waiting on the link for the hotel from SLS and make sure you're in the Jeff Lewis Obsessed Facebook group. There's an event for the January 20th uh, show. So if you've got your tickets, the tickets are available. There are flat $50. Taxes and fees are included for the Saturday night, January 20th live event. Chump Etz, uh, Sarah from Texas show in Hollywood, California. And we will go to dinner afterwards. Hopefully we will hang out a little bit at the hotel. It'll be so fun. But I'm still waiting on that link for you to do. Um, let's see. Have you asked Jeff about the longevity of 789? Michelle says, or somebody says, uh, we did chat about it a little bit at the $10,000 dinner. And then obviously since then, he admitted that um, the, the, the after show is moving very soon to channel 102, which I'm thrilled about. And then, you know, ha ha Andy Cohen, because you got mad at me for asking that question. And now it's finally happening. So there, there you go, Andy Cohen. Um, anyways, this Doug thing, I will definitely, someone is a chump that has already reached out with me from Kentucky saying that her and her husband would fly in, pay attention to the Jeff Lewis obsessed Facebook group. I will definitely be, it's freezing. Ugh, okay. I don't know what's going on. Um, I'm on my Wi-Fi. No idea what's going on. Sorry about that. Um, also, when when y'all say it's freezing, when I look back at the replay, it doesn't freeze. So um, the replays are not freezing. So that's a good thing is you can always look at the Instagram replay and it's not freezing. And the, the replays are everywhere also. Facebook group, Facebook page, YouTube, Twitter. It goes up as a podcast at Jeff Lewis Obsessed afterwards also. Um, yes, Pat says I'd come to Texas for Doug. Yes, for sure. For sure. Um, anyways, so those will be announced soon. I will definitely be putting together, uh, you know, a group of us to go either to dinner or to see the show together. It would be so much fun, but there's got to be some scoop there between with, with Tam, uh, Tamara not coming. And it's like all of a sudden, even after Shannon's uh, DUI, they did one or two shows. Remember when Doug, that was the one he traveled to Phoenix with them and was the host of it. 
And this one says he'll be the host also, but it's definitely Texas. So I'm assuming it might be something like, I went and saw it. It wasn't that good, honestly, but we got a group together. It was so fun. Uh, the Roni group was Ramona, Dorinda, and Countess Luann came to Texas and they did the Dallas, Austin, and Houston areas. And I think they know that Texas is a big market for them and people buy tickets. So shout out, Texas. Yay. Uh, okay, let's get started with today's show. Very hot people. Um, hot meaning some love Kelly Dodd, some don't love Kelly Dodd. So Kelly Dodd and Rick Leventhal were on. Uh, they opened up the show. There was really nothing. I mean, Jeff stuff, right? Uh, this The update with Gage. He talks again uh, about Stu being there and he plays this. So I had recorded it yesterday on one of the commercial breaks and it's um, Jeff have, speaking out loud about, oh, maybe we should do like a DM from Monroe. And he was like, no, no, no. People will think that's serious. Well, today they must have went with that idea and then they recorded this fake voicemail. So I did put up a, a video of that. I mean... You kind of got to, you don't have to agree with everything Jeff does or says, but you have to understand his personality. To me, he is doing this as a joke. He's just kind of going with it. Uh, I don't think he looks at the long-term effects of this for him and Monroe, but do any of his parents know what the long-term effects of the crap we do? I mean, we're doing the best we can. I think he's well aware that um, how he deals with trauma is making light of it and making jokes of it. So they do this voicemail, this fake voicemail. That's basically, I thought it was funny, but it's, it's, um, I think it was Stu's voice. Cause they do like an Irish voice, Irish accent. The watcher is the voice. And then it was Stu and, uh, Scott and Gage asking for more money basically. And then I think it was supposed to be Monroe. I have to listen to it again, but it was like Monroe, like, Hey, are we going to order chips and salsa? And he's like, shh, you're going to let everyone know where we're, where we're at. And then the end, an announcement comes on something like, welcome to the Four Seasons in Cabo, Mexico. And they're like, crap. <laughs> I think it's funny. I don't know. Tell me in comments. Did you like it? Do you think it crossed the line? Do you think all of the talk is not funny at all? I said yesterday, and now Jeff proved me freaking wrong. I said yesterday that I don't think Jeff is worried at all that Gage or Scott would hurt Monroe. And I, he still didn't say that they would hurt them, but he very clearly twice said, I actually don't think he's a good dad anymore. I don't think, and he used the word good father anymore because he basically mentioned the parental alienation. So at this point, whenever you were talking negatively about the other dad in your daughter's life, that's where he draws the line. But also it does seem like, Gage is really growing some balls in doing something that actually could be illegal by not returning her on Saturday and then saying he owes more time. I think he's trying to do the tip for tap. He has clearly added up all the days of custodial days that Jeff has took from him that he agreed to at the time, right? Because there was no, there was no call on the police for on Gage's part. But now at the end of 2023, it's like, the fire is burning inside of him. And he's like, I'm going to do whatever I can to piss off Jeff. And now he's trying to take and make up more of the custodial days that Jeff has maybe taken from him on vacations and trips with um, Monroe, right? So I don't know. Let me know what you think for sure. Pat says, I think Jeff feels he has no control over so much. So he goes into laughter and making fun so that he's not afraid of the possibilities of what may happen. Victoria says, Gage is being petty, but he's playing with fire. He'll get burned on this one. I mean, do you think Jeff would really call the police? That would, I mean, I don't know. I, I don't, mm, that's a fine line. I don't know because I don't, I don't think he would want Monroe to see or hear about her dad having the police call. Her. But I don't know. I guess Croy and Kim Zolciak don't give a rat's ass about that, right? And they keep having the police called by their kids and they don't seem to care. Um, shout out Ashley on TikTok, the Bravo mom. I can't believe I've still never met you. I can't believe it. Like, I'm so disappointed. I've got to meet you in person. I can't wait. Um, oh, Casey on TikTok says Monroe will rue them. They both need to stop pending parent 
pending parenting plan, Gage may be right. Yeah, crazy. Um, yeah, Vina says, I took it as that joking to deal with a hard situation. Um, I think a lot of today, they played a game. They did, um, obviously, that it's just like they did anything to kind of get through the day. And so Jeff really wasn't having to talk as much like the game they did, the 90s or the 80s music game they did with um, with uh, Rick and Kelly. I don't know. It just seems like he needs another day off. You know what I mean? He really doesn't take much time off. I mean, he takes the required holidays from Sirius XM, but he really does. He take literally I mean, even when he's having procedures done, he hasn't done that right. Um. Yes, I love that, Darla. I raised a successful, kind human being, and that's all we can wish for as a parent, right? For sure. Um, so let me know what you think of the voicemail. If you haven't heard it, if you haven't heard today's show, it's up as a reel. I think I only have it on Instagram and Facebook, the Facebook group. Um, YouTube gets a little bit trickier with putting up stuff because they'll take my account down. Uh, and I don't think I've had time to put it up on TikTok yet, but I will try to do that. Um, but Jeff is saying he's going to take Monroe's passport because at this point, uh, Gage is a flight risk. Like he's not doing what they've agreed to. $30,000 this month. I believe that's only Jeff's end of it. Because I don't think, I think he thinks Gage is going to come back and try to sue him for his legal money. But to me, if you're starting all this, I don't know how that works. I don't know. How does that work? If it's at least what we're hearing, Jeff's side of things, it sounds like, um, it sounds like, oh, I'm sorry, I'm missing all these YouTube, they, all my YouTube comments had stopped. Uh, it sounds like we're hearing obviously Jeff's side, but it sounds like everything is Gage either agreeing to something and then reneging on the agreement, um, not agreeing to things he agreed to a month ago with the New York City trip. But $30,000, is that only Jeff's part? Like, that's crazy if so. Um, that's a good question. Windy City Gal on Instagram. Has anyone ever heard about Gage's family being involved with Monroe? I have not. Like, I think the mom has babysat before, like when it wasn't, when it was Jeff's time. But Jeff has made it very clear that Monroe doesn't know his mom. So I don't want a stranger, even if they're family. Clearly, we can have people in our lives that are family, like family, and we can have real genetic family that don't know our family at all. So the fact that when they are not able to be with each other due to work or vacation, whatever, they are supposed to give the other dad first opportunity to take that time with them. And I remember there was one time where Gage's mom was going to fly in and Jeff was like, she doesn't even know Monroe. Like, there's no way in hell I want her staying with this grandma that she doesn't even know. Like, she knows Claudia and Tom, whatever he calls him, whatever she calls Tom, uh, very well, right? So, I don't know. It's crazy. Even a, a nanny to me is better than a grandma that has zero relationship with you. That would be, like, terrifying to me as a six or seven-year-old. Um. Gage taking his New Year's Eve is just total BS, Victoria says. Yeah. Yeah. And I never see of them going to Nebraska, Christina. Like he used to post trips and he's probably just not posting it anymore. Um, of like him going somewhere in the Midwest. It looked like he was working, but he was always super vague about it. And the trips were like 24 hours. So it was super close. Yes, Krista. Uh, do we know if Monroe got into therapy as Jeff petitioned the court? Yes, he she is in therapy. Uh, he talked with it a little bit about at the with us at the ten thousand dollar dinner, but he had also already said that on the radio. He is just not allowed to talk anything about it, and he even agrees with that. But I think he has even mumbled a few things that even the therapist is starting to see the parental alienation stuff from Gage, and he's she's he or she whoever it is is starting to see uh, some things that they don't agree with. So it's crazy. Um, Kelly also talks about her. If you watch the Rick and Kelly show on YouTube uh, or even towards the end when she was on Real Housewives of Orange County, she and Michael divorced, who is her daughter Jolie's biological father. And they've long had their issues, right? 
She says at one point, Michael was a really good dad, but I think he's remarried now. I don't think they have a kid together, but I think he's remarried and Jolie can't stand that um, stepmom. And he doesn't think that, um, I mean, she's really anti-Michael. So she kind of has her own thoughts of, or her own experiences that are similar to what Jeff is going through now, right? For sure. Uh, at the $10,000 dinner, did Jeff mention this Mexico trip drama? No, none of it was, no. And we weren't really asking questions about Gage. Like, I don't think we asked any, he said there was nothing off limits. We could talk about anything. We could talk about anything afterwards. We could post any pictures. He gave me and Melanie zero limitations on what we could say or do or ask him. But we really just had such a good conversation. We really, and Melanie and Scott had such funny stories that we really didn't get into all that kind of drama. We didn't waste our time with his exes. We really didn't. Um, Melanie says, we come on now. Y'all know Kelly is at the heart of Jolie not liking her dad's new wife. I don't know. I go back and forth because sometimes I do really think, do I think Kelly likes drama for the sake of drama? Yes. I think she is begging to be on an ultimate girls trip just to make a shit ton of money real quick and be on TV again, right? She likes the fame, which is understandable. I do think there are many tidbits of Kelly where I do think she is a nice human being and wants her daughter for the sake of Jolie's to have a good relationship with Michael. I, she probably doesn't care about the ex-wife or the, the new wife, sorry. And that all probably goes into how the new wife has either treated uh, Kelly or how she's treating Jolie. Because to me, y'all, I have said it. I was, matter of fact, I was messaging with uh, Michael Riley this morning and we were talking about how it gets so much harder. Like Jeff is only dealing with a seven-year-old Monroe. Give it 10 years and co-parenting with a 17-year-old teenage daughter so much different, right? You're just dealing with so many more things that him and Gage are going to have to be on the same page about, or they're going to be arguing about. It's night and day. Anyone that has older kids understands what, 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 what we're talking about. But I do think that Kelly, uh, in the end would want a good relationship with her, with Michael and her daughter, Jolie. She probably doesn't care about the, the, the current wife for sure. But again, that all if I were an ex-wife, if I were a stepmom, maybe not a stepmom, if, 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 if we divorced or something happened and, and, and Brian had a new woman in his life, oh my God, I would be the worst. Like that would be so weird to me to not have my kids 24 seven. But also if you're at a time where you're having to make decisions together, like you would with a seven-year-old and you hate each other, like Jeff and Gage do, I mean, it's just a nightmare, right? just sounds like a nightmare. Such a nightmare. Um, Kathy says, so happy Monroe is getting therapy. Gage needs to mellow out and do what's best, what's best in her interest. Yeah. Um, yeah. Krista says, Kelly really seems to truly love her kid. She does seem like a really good mom, uh, you know, and she, again, she might share too much, but I think she probably runs it by just like, um, uh, she might run it by Jolie, like, hey, can I talk about this? Can I not talk about this? I would like to think that because I think as a mom, when your kids are teenagers and you're on social media or you're on TV or YouTube, Bravo, uh, Jeff Lewis Live, I think you've got to run it by your kids, like what's okay to chat about and what's not okay, right? Um, what is, whoops, that sweater. I don't know what that means. Rescue with me, Kimberly. What do you do? Do you rescue, rescue dogs? I can't tell from your profile picture. Um, what else? Jolie's going to go to Paris. The universe is it American University, but the Paris location. One of the twins, I can't remember which one it is. One of Shan Shannon's oldest daughter. I get them all three mixed up because they're very close in age, and one's a set of twin girls. Sophie, oh my God, what are their names? Adeline, is that one of them? Sophie, Adeline. I'm forgetting the other ones. Um. Oh, Dame Sue Dish says, I don't think Kelly runs anything by anybody. Well, she definitely wears the pants in the, in the, in the relationship of uh, whatever. Um, Honey Bunny, I shouted out on Facebook, but you're not responding on Facebook. Facebook messages are so much harder for me to see than Instagram messages. It's, it's just a known thing. It's Facebook messages are really harder to get. They, they kind of hide them. So don't send me something on Facebook. I won't see it. Um, anyways, and I can't see everything. I, I, I try. God knows I try, but you know, 
I'm on every social media platform. It's one thing if I was only on Instagram and could do everything there, but you know, I'm on TikTok and Facebook and Instagram and YouTube. Uh, thanks for telling me I missed that before. Yes, honey bunny. Um, but Jolie's going to go, Jolie's going to par college in Paris with Shannon Bedore's daughter, which is the one that I guess this is their first semester, right? So the oldest one, I think graduated from Baylor University, which is in Waco, Texas, not that far from us. And well, a couple of hours, uh, both two of my daughters toured it to, to maybe go there. It's a Baptist private university. Neither one wanted to, chose to go there. And this is one of the twins that goes to Paris. The other one goes in New York City. Is it NYU? Where does she go? She goes to another really big school there. So yeah. Um, oh, thank you, Dame Sue Dish. You do amazing, Sarah. Love you. Um, are you Anne or are you Gina? I can never figure out which one is on because y'all have the group, uh, whatever. Somebody DM me that I should be on y'all's podcast. Call me, Gina. Call me, Anne. Anyone that thinks I should be on someone's podcast, reach out to them. Let me know if, if they want to invite me on. Tell them to DM me. I'm available. Uh, tequila Red Bull dude, his sixth date with him last night and shout out. Um, okay. Jeff doesn't like champagne. This guy has been in Jeff's life for at least the past five years on again and off again, whenever he has a breakup or whenever Jeff does, they've gotten together. So that's why this guy is very comfortable in his house. He was peeing with the door open. I don't know why he doesn't wash his hands. Um, the tequila and Red Bull doesn't bother Jeff. So, but he brought him flowers and champagne. Jeff really liked that. Jeff loves flowers. So, um, Stu used to bring flowers to Jeff's house when he would come home from a trip and like flowers, I guess in the main room or something he would say. So, um, Jeff definitely likes fresh flowers at his, at his house. Oh my God. That's true. Jeff likes his big D. Uh, thinking of Jeff, Jeff is not shying away from the, the sexy talk, right? For sure. Oh my God. I would love that. Ian. um, I would love to be on Dame Sue Dish. It's an amazing podcast. If you haven't watched it, it's so good. They've got TikTok, they've got YouTube and it's everywhere you get your podcast at Dame's Who Dish. And it's not a cooking website. It's, it's Dame's meaning like ladies who chat. And they do all sorts of reality TV. And of course, Jeff Lewis, huge Jeff Lewis fans. Um, but yeah, it's his sixth date, but he brings him champagne. Like if I know as a fan that Jeff doesn't love champagne, why doesn't Tequila Red Bull do know that he doesn't like champagne? Maybe it was like a New Year's gift. Who do you think Jeff will spend New Year's Eve with? Thank you. I'm glad y'all love my top. I bought this for um, BravoCon 2022. Um, it's a little tight in the boobs, but you know, works. I think I got it at Dillard's. What is the brand? One of those brands. What does it say? Whatever that says. Anyways. Um, maybe a re-gift the, the bottle of champagne. <gasps> Pat, nothing would shock me. I'm still not convinced he and Stu will not give it one more try. I'm not either. Nothing surprises me. I thought they were completely done so after Jeff gave the the monogrammed uh chef stew knives to Crystal Lamas uh he said all this stuff about stew and then hours before New Year's Eve they start texting I guess and lo and behold they are they are on again off again from there so crazy oh especially with Stu's new pics his pics of him in the bathing suit the uh is it Fendi bathing suit Somebody sent me a picture of, oh my gosh. Um, oh, thank you, Kathy. Love your sweater, Sarah. You will, you still have that Christmas sparkle. I'm still a little bit sick. So just so you know, I've still got congestion. It just, you know, when you're sick for like weeks and it just won't go away. So I'm not a thousand percent, but anyways, I got to go shopping after this and get um, one of my kids some more jeans and uh, yeah. Tanya says, I like Kelly and I think of her daughter's dad wants to be a good dad. Awesome land, a bonus. 
mom would help with that. Mom would help with that. The stepmom, is that what you mean? The bonus mom. Okay, I was reading that wrong. The bonus mom. Um, okay, let's talk about the Jeff Lewis after show. First of all, it's Paul and Patrick. Love them so much. These men have an ama amazing amounts of energy. I mean, they go to every party they're invited. Talk about yes people. Talk about a couple that loves to spend time together. They're very romantic. They're very respectful of each other. They're in business together. They obviously are married for 20 years. Married. The, they hope to have a wedding next year. Um, loved it, though. Someone named Tiffany, who I got to meet. at the. I met her at BravoCon. And then I also met her at the Jeff Lewis Live show. And her and her husband came to the unofficial after show at the Speakeasy at the SLS Beverly Hills. She's got the most beautiful boobs. So if you were at the live event, she's the one that stood up and Paul was saying that she needs to stitch or like she was sewing her outfit together because like her beautiful, I mean, perfect boobs were on display. They were so pretty. She also, they also came to the meetup with me and Donna Bowling at the W Hotel. That's where I first met her at um, th this last trip in LA. Anyway, she's amazing. She called on the after show and she thanked Paul and Patrick for hosting such a fun event. Oh my God, was it last Friday or two Fridays ago? No, only a week ago. Yes, Kim says she's gorgeous inside and out. Tiffany is so amazing, but so fun also. Anyways, um, if you looked at Kelly's uh, Kelly Dodd's Instagram, she put up a picture of the gift that Paul and Patrick gave her, this hand-painted scarf that they gave her for Christmas. It was really pretty. But Paul does a podcast called Undressed. They do a TV show. I think they're on season four or five, um, Down and Gown, Gown and Out in Beverly Hills. Uh, he designs dresses and gowns for the rich and famous. He does the Jeff Lewis Live radio, the Jeff Lewis Live after show. He does coffee readings. It seems like 24 seven. And he's a high school teacher at Fairfax High School in LA. Crazy. Do they talk just as much in person? They are so easygoing. They are so friendly. They really do take pictures with that selfie light. They are just the light of the party. They really are. They're really, really sweet. Um, I have no idea how he finds time to be a public school teacher, Victoria says. So I did ask him about that one time since I did teach elementary for five years. If you were in with your principals, like I always was, I always had a really good relationship with my principals. The first year I ever taught, day two of kindergarten, I got a substitute teacher, a substitute for my class because I was invited to be on a TV show in Houston uh, on their first episode where they were re they were uh, making over a teacher and giving me like a wardrobe. So I knew one of the producers or the salespeople. She was my neighbor. She's since passed away uh, from uh, pancreatic cancer, sadly. But anyway, she asked me to do it as a favor and, um, you know, she knew I'd been on TV before. So uh, was would feel comfortable doing it. It was really fun. But yeah, my principal let me have that day off because I had such a good relationship with her. So when Paul was hired by this principal, he knew that he would need to ask off for traveling and for TV and radio stuff. And he the, the principal's fine with that because he has such a good relationship with Paul, too. And he's such a good teacher. He's probably amazing with his students. I mean, literally, probably amazing um, for sure. Anyways, I'm forgetting something. Okay, something I do at four o'clock. Um, Melanie, Stu is just not there yet, and that's fine. He just needs to be with a guy who doesn't have kids at home. So you think Stu needs to be with someone that doesn't have kids? I don't think it ever bothered him, Monroe. I mean, I don't know that he wanted to have kids of his own. I don't know. Maybe that's just how it worked out. Now he's in his early 40s. But um, I don't know. Uh, some said 10 or 12 and maybe California is 14. I don't know what y'all are talking about. At what age you can maybe decide to, to uh, pick who you want to live with permanently? I don't know. Anyways. Um, Paul and Patrick leave for Italy tomorrow. Did y'all catch that Rick is very jealous? I mean, Paul, trust me, has zero interest. Maybe he can see Kelly for the beautiful woman that she is, but he has no interest in getting Kelly's pants. And I, I mean, Rick was getting a little feisty about that. He was like, mm, 
Anyways, I thought it was interesting. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Laura says, Stu doesn't want kids. I think a different person will make him happier. Um, I think he and Jeff were very happy. I, I don't know what went wrong. I really don't. And I will never be shocked if they ever get back together. Because the fact that Jeff was trying to get into Gage's pants just this last Christmas, 2022 Christmas, who knows? Um, yeah. Okay. Oh, y'all are talking about the age when someone... Dolly Girl says, Rick's jealousy gets pretty creepy, in my opinion. I like them both, but sometimes it's weird, Rick. Yeah, I think he has a, I think he's got an insecurity about him being older than Kelly. I think that's what it is for sure. Anyways. Okay, well, we are going to wrap it up. Thank you so much for joining live. It is always way more fun to join live. If you're on the replay, replay crew, please still give me a comment. Tell us what you think. We'd love to hear about it. Lots of people love chatting in the comments. Make sure you're subscribing, following all the things. This is our last show of 2023. So thank you so much, Chumpettes. If you know a reality TV fan, if you know a Jeff Lewis listener, please share my account with them, my podcast, Jeff Lewis Obsessed. I would really, really, really appreciate it. See you next year. Oh my gosh. Okay. You'll see me on Instagram, but next year I'm thinking of doing a subscriber Instagram live and a YouTube live either tonight or tomorrow night. So pay attention. Um, if you're a subscriber, it's $4.99 a month and we try to do a weekly one on Sundays, but clearly last Sunday it fell on Christmas Eve. This Sunday it falls on New Year's Eve. So maybe tonight or Saturday night, I'll let you know. And those always go up as a replay. And you get to watch all the past ones up once you become a subscriber also. Shout out, Diane. You just got on. Bye, Chumpettes.